There are 23 million people in Australia. 23 million of us driving cars, watching TV, using air conditioning, commuting by a bus or plane, and lighting up the night sky using energy. Energy which we've captured. Most of our energy comes from crude oil, better known as fossil fuel. Crude oil is made up of hydrocarbons, which contain a lot of energy. When crude oil is processed, it can be separated into several different kinds of fuels, including gasoline, jet fuel, kerosene, and of course, diesel. Diesel fuel is used to power a range of vehicles and operations. It fuels the trucks you see lumbering down the highway, but also helps to move boats, school buses, trains, farming equipment, and various response vehicles and power generators. There are currently 2.9 million diesel-powered vehicles registered in Australia, and diesel is listed as the main fuel consumed domestically in Australia by the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Diesel drives our economy and fuels our way of life. But there are many downsides to relying on a fuel which is refined from crude oil. Most of us are aware of the climate change issue that the burning of fossil fuels leads to the production of greenhouse gases. And so um, regardless of your views on climate change, I think the, the idea that um, increased production of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is not a good thing. Um, also, the issue of running out of fossil fuels. I was thinking the other day, a good indication that we're running out of fossil fuels is the fact that places like the United States and Canada are looking at shale oil and tar sands. That's a good indication to me that we're running out of um, conventionally um, resourced fossil fuels. But, uh, today, there is a huge need because we are running out of fossil fuels. And these are the crude oil deposits in Arabia and Northwest Cape and Bass Strait, and also the natural gases which uh, are around the world. So we need to have a strategy, a science strategy, to build up an alternative resource, and that resource is bioenergy. Bioenergy is renewable energy derived from biological sources. This comes in many forms, including bioethanol and biodiesel. Biofuels can traditionally be separated into essentially ethanol, so ethanol from things like sugarcane, and biodiesel. Also, we're looking more towards um, other um, alcohols and alkanes as potential biofuels, so it's not restricted just to ethanol and, and biodiesel. Pangamia pinata is one tree being considered as a feedstock for the renewable energy industry. Pangamia trees, like this one here, produce hundreds of pods each year. When these pods ripen, they look like this. And inside these pods are the seeds. And it's these seeds here that we use to make biodiesel. Let me explain a little bit about what Pongami actually is and why do we think that it is a very, very good candidate for biofuels. Now, Pongami is a tree and it's a legume tree. And most people know legumes, but they know it as vegetable legumes. But uh, legumes also are trees. There's a, a very, very popular Australian tree called acacia or wattle. That is a legume. Now, the legume family has about 17,000 uh, species in it. But uh, there is one uh, species which is called Pongamia, Pongamia pinnata, or Melissia pinnata. And uh, that legume tree uh, has the special characteristic of producing a lot of seeds. And uh, here is a, is, a, is, a, is a cluster of seeds, and you can see the, the fruit stand, so this is attached to a main stem. And uh, so the seeds inside, uh, there's a single seed inside each pod, in many ways remind you of a bean pod or a pea pod. I mean, that, that could be a pea. These seeds are special because uh, as compared to, let's say, bean or pea, uh, these seeds contain a lot of oil. The, the, the oil content here is 40 to 45% of, that, of, of that, that seed. 
So if you squash that seed mechanically, and there are a whole bunch of machines which can do this and their different designs, then out comes actually an oil, just like this. I mean, it sloshes around a bit, it's, it's viscous, it's a vegetable oil. It's like your peanut oil or your soybean oil that you use for cooking. But this oil is a triglyceride, and which means that there is a glycerin backbone and three fatty acids are attached to it, so therefore triglyceride. And these fatty acids can be liberated by a simple chemical process called transesterification. And you can get a fuel out of it called biodiesel. But the diesel which you can make out of this, the fatty acid ester, because of the process of transesterification, is very volatile. And that's what you need in an engine in order to cause the explosion. So what we have is we have a process industry where the leaves are catching the sunlight. Uh, this is converted into sugars, which is a normal plant process. But the sugars uh, move to the developing seed. And so with nitrogen coming from the root and sugar coming from the leaf, these pods develop very, very quickly and very full so that one pongamia tree will carry between five and 10, up to 20,000 seeds. So that when you have a really mature tree, so after, let's say, seven to 10 years, you will easily get 20,000 seeds like this from one pongamia tree every year. Pongamia pinata has the potential to revolutionize the way we think about diesel. Growing pongamia, can result in cheaper, cleaner biofuel production in Australia for Australia. <laughs>